Hello and welcome to the video. This is the first video in a short series where I'm going to do some VTOL exploration. Now, what I mean by that is that figuring out some of the do's and don'ts of how to build your own VTOL craft. Now, VTOL is something that I've been interested in for quite a few years. In fact, there was this video going back quite a few years ago, 2020, I think it was, where I sat down with Ben from 3DXR and he talked about some of the tips and tricks that he uses to build the large professional UAV systems for agriculture culture, universities, surveying and things like that. And that was really useful. And I was getting ready to then build my own, but time has got away from me. So here in 2022, I think it's at that point now where VTOL stuff is becoming much more mainstream. And in fact, I've looked at a few more VTOL craft on the channel. First one I looked at was a little kind of twin tail sitter toy really rather than anything else that was kind of fun and interesting to have a look at then i went up to see ben at 3dxr and we flew some of his big professional uav vtol systems that was really instructive and then just before christmas i got in the omp hobby zmo vtol that is one of the first kind of hobby grade that still an expensive model you know a thousand to twelve hundred pounds but was the first one that wasn't thousands and thousands of pounds or toy grade i was hoping that that model from omp hobby would teach me a lot of stuff however they've probably quite cleverly made it so that you can't get into the guts and have a look at how the flight controller is set up because if you can get into the guts you can change things and you can potentially mess something up that's going to crash your very expensive model so i am going to put these two or three videos together lots of other people at the moment are playing with vtol not a lot of people though are actually explaining how to set it up and why you would do certain things in certain ways so that's what this series is all about hoping that after I've got these first two or three videos away, I can actually build some VTOLs here using traditional hobby grade parts for an awful lot less money than it costs to go and buy something like that OMP hobby ZMO VTOL system. Now, this time though, uh, this video, it's the first of maybe two or three videos. I'm hoping to get up to Ben at 3DXR and get him to get into the guts of one of the VTOLs that he has set up and show how to configure everything. But this first video I thought would be useful to make because I can actually talk about some of the basics and some of the stuff that I've learned in my playing with the technology over the last year, year and a half before we get into Ben and kind of learn from one of the Jedi Masters. The kind of questions I'm going to kind of talk about in this particular video are what kind of flight controller and software do you need? What kind of fixed wing model would make a good candidate to change into VTOL? Uh, what are the setup steps to configure it? Um, there's something called quad plane in Ardu plane, which is what I'm going to use. Come on, more on this as we go through this little series. But it isn't simple to set up. It's all in there and it's what a lot of the professional rigs use and I think it's a really good choice actually because at the moment I have uh, is a million miles away from supporting VTOL but it is complicated to set up if you actually read the documentation it's really tricky also things like how to make a model for example what are the steps I know that Ben has a number of things that he goes through in terms of you know doing things like hovering in multi-rotor first but it's the transitions that are the really tricky part how you go from hover to forward flight but the trickier one is how you come back from flying in forward flight back to the hover. And that is where lots of pilots are getting stuck. And that's because lots of pilots that I'm seeing at the moment are places like YouTube and the forums are trying to build the Bugatti Veyron as their first ever car rather than starting out with a go-kart or a Model T. So let's go through some of the common things that are worthwhile thinking about if you want to build your first VTOL aircraft. First and foremost is to think about what kind of VTOLs there are. There's actually a couple of dozen different VTOL types that you can build. Things from twin tail sitters, you have flying X's, you have four plus one where it's a quadcopter bolted onto an existing plane. You have models that have uh, motors that rotate like that OMP Hobby ZMO, for example. But the simplest one to make for the first time VTOL is your classic four plus one. And that is where you add four multi-rotor motors onto an existing fixed wing model. So you have four multi-rotor motors for the ascent and descent stage, the vertical takeoff and landing, and you have the standard prop, whatever that is at the front or back of the fixed wing model that's gonna provide the forward movement. 
Now, why would you want to do it that way? Well, there are a number of advantages. First and foremost is the fact that you can actually have all the motors running at the same time. So it means that you can have uh, thrust that's going to provide the lift to keep the model in the air. And also the prop at the back can push it forward through the air. That tricky transition back from forward flight back into the hover is a lot easier with a 4 plus 1. And that is because as soon as you initiate the transition, those motors can start up produce the thrust so as the model starts to slow down and the wing stalls it's already being supported by those of the four motors and that is the part that lots of pilots are struggling with particularly with at the moment doing things like modifying things like the small ranger t1 and adding the ability to tilt the rotors up it is really tricky to get that all dialed in and working properly again omp hobby took another four months after the prototypes to get that as dialed in as they could and even then the transition back from forward flight to hover if you've watched that video can be a little bit scary so i would recommend first vtol a four plus one is going to be the way to go fortunately that does mean that you have to carry the extra weight of the four escs and the four motors and the stuff to actually bolt all of that gubbins onto the existing airframe and that leads us nicely onto which planes are good candidates for vtol well first and foremost you want a plane that is going to be able to physically fit the four motors on there and to have enough clearance so the props that you need to use are going to be nice clean airflow it also helps if it's a model that can fly at slower speeds. Uh, you potentially are going to have those tricky transitions, as I talked about already. So having a model with a wing that doesn't stall until it gets quite slow is going to make sure that by the time that wing stalls and stops producing lift, that the motors are already in full effect and are going to keep it up into the air. And as well as being able to handle all the extra weight of all that extra gubbins, the four motors and props and the ESCs and some kind of power distribution board in the model as well, you also need to make sure that it's going to be stiff enough so that the motors aren't wobbling around. Um, quadcopter code doesn't expect there to be lots of flexing in the frame and so you need to have a little bit of additional bracing either through the wing or through the body or both so that the multi-rotor part is as solid as you can get it so you need a couple of things things like the Bixlers are good examples Skywalkers there are other options too I'm going to have a look in my garage and find a model that's going to be a suitable candidate maybe something like the bigger model from Atom RC might be one that I go for when we actually build one out here in terms of considerations for the multi-rotor pieces, well, you know what? We need pretty lightweight motors and props because that is weight that's got to be dragged around by the model while it's in forward flight. Those motors are essentially doing nothing apart from providing lots of extra drag. So lighter weight motors make a lot of sense. You also need to think about how much thrust they need to produce because they need to be able to support the model in the air and produce... Uh, just under about twice the entire model with the batteries and the cameras and everything else you have in it to keep it in the air. Now, uh, Ben up at 3DXR says, yeah, you know, about 60-65% of the thrust is the weight. So, for example, if it's a kilogram of model that you want your VTOL, then ideally you want the four motors to producing at least about 1,600 grams of thrust, 1.6 kilograms worth of thrust or more. Because you don't need a lot of additional power, but you do need to be able to combat the uh, the pushing around from any wind that you encounter. But also you've got these big wings that act as kind of big drags for everything. And you've got to overcome that as well. Where in a quadcopter, you don't have these big paddles stuck out catching the air. So I would recommend if you have a figure out what the weight of the model is going to be and then make sure that you've got around or just under twice the amount of thrust available uh, as the weight of the overall model. That's going to mean that there's more than enough power to get the thing into the air and to handle any kind of unexpected situations that you might get into when it's in the hover. Ideally, the smallest props you can get away with will be good. Obviously, you want to limit the amount of drag that these motors um, are creating, motors and props are creating when it's in forward flight. So I'm probably going to look at maybe multi-rotor motors, but I'll see when I get there when we I build one. In terms of considerations for the flight controller, 
Flight controller, I'm sure when we look uh, at the stuff that Ben is building in the next video, he's going to be using PixHawk Cube, which is absolutely the choice for that kind of professional grade of UAV uh, VTOL system that he manufactures for his customers. I, however, potentially going to look at using something else. Ardu Pilot Quad Plane runs on lots of other hardware as well, things like the Matek Wing flight controllers, and that would be a much cheaper alternative than using something like a Pixhawk Orange. However, if you're going to be building a model and money is no object, then Pixhawk Orange would be definitely the way to go. It does need to have a lot of outputs because you're not only going to have to plug in the throttle ailerons, elevator rudder, potentially two ailerons. You've also got to plug in four additional in outputs for the four channels for the motors as well. So you need at least eight outputs, uh, probably nine or ten if you're going to be using Y not using Y cables for things like your ailerons as well. So you need lots and lots and lots of outputs. You also need to be able to handle the two power systems. You're obviously going to have the traditional one that you're going to connect to, which is going to go out to the ESC for the forward flight, but you're going to have to have some power distribution board that's also going to then send the battery power out into the individual ESCs that are going to run the motors too. In terms of considerations for mounting everything, it's pretty standard stuff. We kind of talked a little bit about that already. Uh, the, everything has to be pretty rigid for the multi-rotor components. And ideally, you want to try and minimize drag. So you want things on the model that aren't going to be in the way. So ideally, having you know a pole under each of the wings that's mounted front to back is going to make a lot of sense. Now, interestingly, there's one thing that I've seen a couple of people get caught out with. And that is that the central gravity on a fixed wing is different from the central gravity on a multi-rotor. Now, the central gravity on a fixed wing tends to be about a third of the way back from the leading edge of the wing. That's typically roughly where it is. Well, in a multi-rotor, you want the central gravity to be right in the middle of the frame under where the flight controller is. However, if you put one on top of the other, as we're thinking about doing here to build a four plus one, and that's how most of the UAV systems that Ben is building up there at 3DXR are built out, then you get this kind of weird effect where the front motors are much further forward from the leading edge of the wing, and it looks a little bit unbalanced, but actually that's exactly where you want it to be. So when it's in the hover, the central gravity is in the middle of the, those four motors, and then when it's flying, the central gravity is still in exactly the right place. Because central gravity, of course, with a fixed wing is really, really important, and we want to maintain that when we've done the adaptation. However, as I said, I'm probably going to use a carbon fiber tube and actually put them front to back under the wings like this. That will minimize the drag that motor mounting will create. That means the wings are probably going to have to be reinforced with additional fiber pieces sunk into them, maybe in the body as well, to make sure that it's as rigid as possible. However, carbon fiber tube is relatively inexpensive now, and with a 3D printer, it's easy to design and print those pieces, and any pieces I make through the series that I'm planning over the summer this year, I will absolutely share on Thingiverse. So with all that said, join me next time where uh, hopefully I'll be with Ben and we can sit and go through some of the quad plane setup tips for how he does it up there when he builds those big professional multimeter flying VTOLs that he does for his customers for agriculture, universities and other things as well. And then the plan is to bring all of that know-how and knowledge back and then we'll try and build one here using cheaper hobby grade components. So stay tuned, and I'll hopefully see you in the next video. Thank you for spending your time today watching that video. You can find me in all the usual places on social media, and if you're trying to learn about a subject, then check out the playlist. All of my videos are organized into easy-to-follow playlists that if you're trying to learn a topic, will take you from the basics right the way through to some pretty advanced stuff.